Hi guys, it's Thomas Rene, uh, the head of voice and speech at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Um, I've been getting some requests from you guys to talk about lists. Um, I have a very particular relationship uh, with lists and the word lisp. Uh, I feel that word lisp automatically, I think of course, um, insinuates a speech impediment, which also has an insinuation that it's wrong speech or that uh, it's inappropriate or childlike. And so I do want to talk about this and I do want to talk about these speech sounds, but I think it's important but that if you are looking, if you are a person who is looking to change part of your speech pattern because you have quote unquote a lisp, uh, I find that a big aspect of that change first has to be a little psychological. Um, I find that the habit gets so uh, ground into you because of the negative connotation of this particular word. So from now on, I'm not going to be calling it a lisp, though that's going to be in the title so that you guys can find this and, and, and know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm just going to call them speech sounds. So I want to talk specifically today about uh, when we're looking at, uh, within the English language, an S or a Z, a speech sound, and the potentials that we have and ultimately, if you are a person that's looking to change the way you say an S or a Z uh, sound, uh, I think it's important that we practice all of these types, and uh, I may come up with a couple more in future videos, but I think it's important that we practice all of these types and look at them to say, I can do all of them, and I'm good at all of them, and it gives you options so that you can change as opposed to psychologically beating yourself up over and over again saying, no, what I do is wrong and what I should do is. Uh, I just feel like in my ex experience with students, that really actually makes the process a lot slower. So even though you might just be like, oh, just tell me what to do, can I just do it with my tongue? I think we do need to approach it in a very specific way, language-wise. Um, so that being said, let's look at potential speech sounds that we could uh, make to say within the English language an S sound, quote unquote, or a Z, quote unquote, sound. Um, and I'm going to use two words, the, the name Sue, as in like Susan, and then the word zoo, like where there are caged animals, um, as, as examples. And I want to talk about a couple different pronunciations or a couple different ways of saying that S or that Z sound, because that's only one way of each of those. So the first one is what I just did. And we're talking about uh, placing the tongue up onto the alveolar ridge. It's right behind the teeth and not touching the teeth, but it's that wrinkly bit. I feel like it's, uh, some people call it uh, the gum ridge. I call it the alveolar ridge. And if you press your tip of the tongue up, right there, it's nice and wrinkly, okay? Now, I know of two ways that people usually make this sound. Uh, and so we need to first identify in this video how exactly you make your S sound. So one potential way that someone might do this is they actually take the tip and the blade up to that alveolar ridge. Zoo, zoo, zoo. Zoo. Um, and so if the tip is up. Some of you, if you are working on the alveolar ridge, you might actually keep the tip down and are using either the blade or the front. Uh, it's going to be downward. And you might be using the, uh, the blade or possibly the front of the tongue. And that's going up to the alveolar ridge. Zoo. So, Zoo. That is not one that I usually do, and I find it a little difficult to be clear with that one. My tip is down for that one. So you may be a person who does that. Now I want to be clear when we're talking about lisp. Okay, one of these two sounds is usually. Uh, depending on what's comfortable for you, whether the tip is up or the tip is down, that's usually the goal of what we are trying to attain uh, for this quote-unquote S sound or this Z sound. Um, so if 
either one of those things is not what you're doing, then you're just using uh, a different speech action. And I want to look at a couple other options that you may be doing. Um, but ultimately, as you continue with this playlist uh, and go along some videos to really investigate and practice different ways of pronouncing an S and a Z, um, ultimately you're probably going to want to be shooting for one of those two again depending whether you're comfortable with the tip tongue tip up or whether you're comfortable with the tongue tip down now in kind of like elocution uh what i've seen in uh the uh the tradition of speech classes a lot of people a lot of teachers are shooting to have their students tongue tip upward but again in my experience i just find not all people can produce a satisfactory S sound with the tongue tip up. So I just say, if you're a person that tongue tip goes down and you can still make that sound, um, great, do it, nobody cares. And if there's an issue, then we'll look at it. Uh, and if you guys are having issues, let me know. And, and maybe there's a specific video I can look at, depending on if you're looking at voiceover or something's coming up um, uh, with a micro close on, on camera. Uh, but we can look at that and it's a very special case. Anyways, uh, a couple different versions that might be happening uh, to you is the tongue tip might be coming up against the back of the teeth. So instead of just being on the alveolar ridge, it might actually be pressing on the teeth. So instead of su, you might get su, 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 su. Again, instead of su, you might get su. Instead of zoo, you might get zoo, zoo. I'm hoping that you can see, I know it's not clear. Mm -hmm. My tongue is pressing against the back of the teeth. This is often called a dentalized S or dentalized Z, or we're going back to the L word, the dentalized lisp. Another option that may be happening for you is an interdental lisp or an interdental S sound or interdental Z sound. And that's when the tongue inter between dental teeth is between the teeth itself. Mm -hmm. We might get thu or thu. Yeah, again, thu or thu. So we're going to get a dentalized version of that. Uh, we're still getting that friction though. Uh, so you may do that. I feel like that's often an extreme case. Uh, so for people who are working with their teeth during these sounds, you're probably going to get something that's more dentalized, not interdental. That they. I think I said that wrong before, sorry. Uh, the interdental between the teeth, thu or thu, we're probably gonna get mostly dentalized thu or thu, where the tongue is not protruding out of the mouth. Okay. Uh, two, two more things I wanna look at. We have moved the tongue forward from the alveolar ridge. Now if we move it back to uh, the post alveolar uh, towards the hard palate. So if you take the tip of your tongue, and you feel the alveolar ridge and you move it back, curl it back, you'll feel this moment where that wrinkly gum ridge turns very smooth. Now you're on the hard palate. So some space uh, right at the back of the alveolar ridge before you get to the hard palate, you may start getting a whistly S. Um, uh, I think some people call it a strident S. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other names people might use. Anyways, if I start from that alveolar sound and I just bring the tongue back a little bit, you might start to hear some extra frequencies and it sounds like a little whistle. So, so. Su, 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 zu, as opposed to, again, on the alveolar sound, su or zu. So maybe that's one that you do, and if not, great, maybe something else. The last one I want to talk about in this particular video is a lateral lisp or a lateral S, lateral Z. Uh, and what that means is we're going to get the tip and a uh, blade of the tongue up to the alveolar ridge, like we did before. But now we're gonna have space along the side of the tongue. Yeah. And that's where the air is gonna come out of. It's not gonna move forward. We're gonna keep that tongue tip up and that air is gonna come around the tongue. And so we're gonna get zoo or zoo. Zoo, zoo, 
Su, Zu. Okay. So just to recap, so we can end this video, I really want you to first identify what type of sound you are actually making when you're going to say this S or Z sound. Is it purely alveolar? And is the tongue tip up? Su, zu. Is it purely alveolar, but the tongue tip is down? Su, zu. Is it pressing against the back of the teeth, the tongue tip pressing against the back, back teeth? Su, zu. Is it extending in between the teeth? Thu, thu. Is it pulling back almost onto the hard palate to make a whistly sound? Su, zu. Or is it pressed up against the alveolar ridge and your space along the side of the tongue to create a lateral sound? Thu, thu. Okay. Uh, and if it's something else, be sure to comment and message, uh, yeah, send a message to me so we can start looking at exactly what's going on for you. Uh, and then that will uh, help inform me how to develop some more um, tips and videos to add into a Lisp, a Lisp playlist, that's hard to say. Um, so we can start moving forward at perhaps changing a particular speech action that you may do when you're pronouncing an S or a Z. I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, if you like this, please feel free to like it and subscribe. Um, yeah, uh, check out the playlist that this, is, this video is part of. So I'm gonna be releasing more videos after this one so that we can incrementally and, uh, what's the word? Um, cumulatively be looking at particular skill sets to help you change speech sounds that would fall under that lisp category all right awesome i hope this helps guys um good to see you i'll see you soon keep practicing bye